right, this is take three. So, have I mentioned how much sometimes the nuclear war simulation software can be a little funky if you're not making sure everything is done correctly? Because it is. So, if it's your first time on your channel or you haven't done so yet, please uh, like this video, subscribe, click the bell notification. This is the best time to subscribe to the channel. I'm doing this ongoing series where I am doing the most realistic nuclear escalation possible uh, with multiple nations involved. And right now I am doing two things. I'm taking the base mod, World 14, that was uploaded by Michael Corrigan. Did an excellent job. And then I'm updating the nuclear forces for the best estimates by 2024 of what's actually deployed. And then I'm testing out different starting scenarios. I've fixed about half the forces so far, but I'm still running some tests along the way as kind of what's the, to me, the best starting um, location, flashpoint, for it to escalate from there. So there's a few that are kind of no-brainers. Ukraine, um, the Middle East and Gaza, the you know Iran, Israel, uh, proxy Cold War that's, you know, turning proxy war, turning potentially hot, um, South China Sea escalation. So this time it's looking at a South China Sea escalation and one possible path. Now this isn't necessarily what my, when my finished um, scenario is done. This may not be what starts it, but this is just me kind of experimenting with it. So I'm going to put my attack plans. This starts with a North Korean Sorry, click on the right one. This starts with a North Korean. Um, they're going to fire what they consider a warning shot, which would be um, intended to be over the Pacific Ocean and done in such a fashion that it wouldn't really cause you know any impact. It's more of a very intense um, saber rattling. Unfortunately for them, it goes off course and actually strikes Tokyo. And from there, the U.S. is going to utilize some forward-deployed B-52 bombers with standoff cruise missiles, nuclear-tip uh, standoff cruise missiles. And they're going to take out the known North Korean nuclear and chemical weapon sites and a few other bases, striking in low population areas. Again, the intention here is trying to minimize civilian losses to keep this escalation ladder from rising. China... It's going to respond in a very limited fashion, but kind of use this as an excuse to try to take out the U.S. THAAD battery, which they've never been particularly happy about us deploying there. And then the U.S. is going to do... A very... Where is it? It's just, okay, there it is. I don't know why I'm not seeing the. Arc. If for some reason this doesn't work, I'll do it manually. Um, this is where, again, it gets a little screwy, but um, it should be coming out of this sub right here. So I'm not sure why it's not showing a trajectory. China is going to then do their own kind of warning response, which will be a very high altitude strike over Guam. So let's go without further ado, let's go on the attack plan. Okay, hopefully four times is the charm now. So different points this has been failing but it should work now. So I'm going to hit 100 times speed until the mobile launcher starts to fire. Pause it for a second. If it doesn't, for some reason, I will manually do it. It, I mean, it literally just did. I don't know why now this time it's not. All right, so I'm going to manually 
do this strike over Tokyo. Single detonation. Apologies, but they're driving me crazy with this one. Um, off camera, I just did it again, and it worked. It fired, and this time it's deciding not to. So that's what was going to happen. Play 10 times speed for a second. Let that take place. So calculate the casualties. So we have 841,000 casualties in Japan due to that miscalculation by North Korea not gonna see any real fallout or anything but still a significant amount of casualties so the US counter-strike is now taking place Let's speed it up a little bit because these bombers can be a little slow just do a hundred times speed now, being that these are air launch, standoff air launch cruise missiles, it's not going to have to get all the way on target like a B-2 bomber would, which is doing the old school gravity bombs. So they've started a fire here. You're seeing these... Missiles start to go. Okay, I've slowed time down a little bit. So let's assess. So we're going to see 302,000 North Korean casualties. Again, still trying to minimize casualties to keep the escalation ladder from climbing. And then they could, at that point, follow on with more conventional once they felt the chemical and nuclear um, capabilities of North Korea were neutralized. We're also going to see China. Let's see attack plan to see where it's coming from. Okay, so we're coming from right there. Let's get it going. A little quick for that so now we're going to see 76,000 South Korean casualties we'd also be seeing US military casualties at that point so again this is where we're going to go up the escalation rung now that the US is going to launch a warning strike let's see here that'd be at 520 minutes so let's see 520 That'd be eight hours and a half, plus some change. So if this started at noon, we'd be looking at... Twenty and a half. So let me zip ahead. I want to make sure, because this is the other one that was having an issue earlier. So I want to make sure that it does 
Otherwise, I'll do it manually. So I'm going to skip ahead here. So it does not, in fact, look like it's Yeah. Okay, so let me manually do that then. I apologize, I'm gonna have to play around with this to figure this one out a little bit. Why it's doing that. Single detonation. I'm gonna go to the US, choose a warhead. run this again so now we have 1301 Chinese casualties and again that was meant really as a warning shot so let's go to attack plan the Chinese response is at seven So this should put it close to midnight. We have to keep an eye on where it's coming from. Okay. Keep an eye on where it's coming from, and I'm going to move the time period ahead. Oh, all right, got it. That was a close one. All right, I'm going to go 10 times here. Apologies. I'm trying to get this video done because I actually trying to do this video before we train today. We got Cheston back and uh, giving me no end of fits. So it's going to be detonating 5,000 meters over the air. And again, they chose a less populated area. This is more of a say, hey, we can, you know, we wanted to, we could be taking out your base right there. Now, it wouldn't be super far away from the naval base where they hit. So, all in right now, we're looking at a close to 1.2 million casualties. This would be a would be a very limited escalation kind of represent even though time wise it's only been a little under 24 hours on that clock it's mainly to keep me from having to skip forward we'd be looking at maybe a three to four day period right there as planning out this would continue to escalate from this point but this is kind of how world war three starts um unless you consider us already in world war three depending on what you know some people's mindsets right now that we're in the early phases of World War III with potential conflict, especially if something were to actually break out in the South China Sea, I think that'd be a viable claim. Right now, 
the conflicts are so regional though that it'd be hard pressed to actually consider that. But that's how it could look as a starting point. So that's one potential starting point right there. And you see there, once nukes started getting lobbed around, how quickly casualties start to mount up. So it's a takeaway. Leave me feedback below what you think of it. Um, and we could, as I kind of work through these other potential start points, that's where I look at from some collaboration. So please leave me a feedback. Let me know what you think. And I've done some Ukraine escalation videos previously, but I'm going to do one specific to this because um, they usually end up being pretty quickly going um, strategic and all in. This one I'm looking more at more of a slow um, escalation. So I'm going to work something up like that, maybe post it not tomorrow, but uh, maybe the next day to give me some time to test out and see why some of these attack plans didn't take place. It seemed like it was, I don't know, I, I got to figure that out because sometimes they're working and sometimes they aren't. I did it on, you know, without rolling, it worked. Maybe it's some built-in fail system on here, like sometimes they're failing and not launching. So that may be built in. I have to maybe uh, understand this a little better. So, oh, let me see, casualties here, by the way. So 1.2 million. And what we'd be looking at is, you know, the vast majority from Japan and North Korea, but some from South Korea and Guam and a limited amount from China, too. So thanks, everybody. Like I said, please like and subscribe. Be on the lookout. New video coming uh, Thursday. So thanks.